So we looked at these binomials uh, last week when we were talking about multiplying polynomials. We said if you have a binomial that can be written in the form a squared minus b squared, we had what is known as a difference of squares. a is squared, b is squared, and we are subtracting, so it is a difference. If we look at these two examples here, we can write them as a difference of squares. So in the first bracket, 5x is all squared, and the second bracket, 6y is all squared. Why don't you try writing the second one as a difference of squares in brackets? So 121, well, the square root is 11, so we have 11 squared. But what about m to the power of 36? Remember, when you're raising a power to a power, you're multiplying exponents. So we need an 18 there. And for x, it's going to be an 8, multiplying powers when you raise a power to a power. Now, let's be clear, though. This is not factored form. All this does when we write it like this is help us figure out what A equals and what B equals. This is important if we want to use that formula we talked about for a difference of squares. So before we go any further, look at questions one, two, three, and four. I want you to decide whether or not they represent a difference of squares. Pause your video, give it a try. So we see that this can be written as three squared minus 10 y to the power of four squared. So yes, that one is a difference of squares. What about question two? No, this is a sum, the addition of squares. It's not a difference of squares. What about question three? Did you notice there's a greatest common factor? Yes, it is a difference of squares. This can be written as two times x squared minus five squared. And question four, yes again. So two to pay attention to. Question three, greatest common factor. We should always be watching for a greatest common factor. And question two, if there's a plus sign, it is not a difference of squares. So do you remember how we arrived at this product, a difference of squares? I hope you do. We were practicing using that formula. This is a plus b times a minus b. This is a formula that you should have memorized. If you don't know it yet, put a big red star beside it, write it on a piece of paper, stick it up on your refrigerator, beside your bathroom mirror, wherever you need it to be to help you remember it. So we want to factor using this formula. I'm going to suggest that the first step is to write it in this form. That way we can find A and B. So for question one, we have 3 squared minus 10 
y to the power of four all squared. We know a and we know b. So now we can write this in factored form, a plus b times a minus b. Let's look at question two. What will a equal? 2x and b, 9. So now we can write this in factored form. a minus b times a plus b. Notice that the order of the plus and minus sign doesn't matter. A goes in front, B goes in back. The order for plus and minus does not matter. I'd like you to pause your video and try the remaining, how many questions do we have here? Four questions, perfect. So let's look at the, each of these. We found A and B. So we have A plus B times A minus B. In question four, there was a greatest common factor. We kept the greatest common factor in our final factoring. And then we also found A and B a minus b times a plus b and times our greatest common factor. There's a greatest common factor in question five as well. And then we found a and b. Same thing for question six. Now, factoring a difference of squares is usually pretty easy if you have a lot of practice. They become difficult when they show up out of nowhere and you're not thinking about it. So make sure you spend enough time practicing them and then doing mixed practice so that you can recognize a difference of squares whenever it shows up. And we talked about this at the beginning of this lecture, pay attention to that plus sign. This is the sum of two squares and it cannot be factored. There is no way to factor a sum of squares. We call this a prime polynomial. So watch out for that sum and make sure you get enough practice in. I wanted to point out for those of you who maybe haven't printed your class notes yet and still think you should, because of course you should, there's lots of factoring practice here and the answers for all of these can be found on your um, class Moodle page. So go back there if you want a bit of extra practice.